Praise the Lord and welcome to the unction. Welcome to the unction. I am Pastor Ray Curry. This is where we give the word of God and depend on the spirit of God to edify the people of God. Uh, we're glad to be back online now. Uh, one thing about going live is you can always tell when it's live because live gets live. Praise the Lord. So we're grateful for everyone that's here that is uh, waiting to hear the word of the Lord. And we pray that this word will bless and encourage you. All right. Now, I'm hoping that we're, we're not echoing. And so we want to make sure our sound is doing well. Uh, I have about six of you who have come over from the other channel waiting. So um, now we're, we're just checking all of our levels and making sure we're straight because once in a while, once again, live gets live. So we're, we're going to hear what we sound like now. We had a little bit of feedback. I just want to make sure we're good. So I'm going to keep speaking. Praise God. Let's, let's make sure we're good. All right, yo, sound doing well. <laughs> we, we're back on live. Uh, believe it or not, all week long I've been having issues with my platforms. And uh, I, there, there are some things that I might know be going on, especially when you speak out the way I do. But uh, even on TikTok, I've seen a hit to our platform. And here I've, I've had, I haven't had a night quite like this. But one thing about us, we're going to keep on fighting, and uh, if there's anything at play, we're going to find out, and we're going to fight anyway, because the bottom line for us is the truth got to get out. You see it tonight. I want to talk about this, and I'm going to keep on standing for what's right. Single pastor, simple pastor, struggling pastor. Uh, I thank God for everyone who's here. We're going to get into this word because there's a lot that needs to get covered. The church is under constant attack. The truth is under constant attack, and somebody has to be honest even to the point where it might injure them. You have to be honest even to a point where people may leave, people might turn away, but you have to stand on what you know is the word. And tonight, we're going to talk about some issues, and we're going to get into the word of God. The truth is just the truth. Whoever like it, the truth is the truth. Whoever don't like it, the truth is the truth. Here's what I don't understand. I don't understand people who invest into their own degradation. I want to explain this. It's about 32 of you here so far. I want to explain this to you. There is nothing to gain by a preacher lying to you. There's nothing to gain. The only thing that happens at the end is your loss. You see that? And as a pastor, I don't understand why a lot of people concerning the word. Because at the end of the day, I'm lost. The only there's only two ways a pastor can lie to you in the word. Either they're too ignorant to study, that they're just too ignorant and just don't care enough to study because they, they don't really understand the seriousness and the gravity of this thing. Or two, they are actually evil. They know they don't believe in God. They know they don't believe in the scriptures and they're so evil and insidious that they're saying, you know what, I'm going to help people live their good lives and let them live their best life now and their purpose, life, or whatever the case may be, because when we're dead, we're done. And those are the only two reasons why a preacher would lie to you. They're just ignorant, or they for real just do not believe this thing. And, and, and I, I just thank God for everyone that's here. I appreciate you already got some, some amens. My dear wife, I want to thank God for you. No weapon form against you will prosper. And I believe that my dear... Uh, Sister Sophia Blackman, also I want you to greet Overseer Blackman. We love you so much. Kawana. Uh, Tim Warren says, uh, they hate on you, Pastor. It's sad. It, it, it is sad. Um, some prophets Kodesha say, if they're against you, they're against God. And that's, that's any of us standing for the Lord. Any of us standing for the Lord need to understand that if God be for you, He's more than the world against you, and I want you to understand that, and I appreciate all of your, your comments, your amens. I, I, I would like to say this, that um, I, I have found that it is more egregious to churchianity to call out sin than to actually do the sin. It is more egregious to them. You are more of a pariah, a social outcast for calling out error than actually going into error. 
If you go in the era, everybody pat you on your back and say, oh, we're all human, and then you go on, we lift you up, and you, you keep moving forward. But if you point out error, you're a Pharisee, you're judgmental, this, that, and the other. And uh, I thank God for the unction. I thank God for you because you are people who say, nah, give me the truth. Just give me the truth. I want to make heaven my home. I believe I have an eternal destination. So I appreciate you. And I want to get into some things. So I want you to listen to this. I'm going to be listening with you and uh, making sure we're on one accord. I want you to hear uh, this is Pastor YPJ. You see him. He's uh, the, the biggest one in the picture. His name is actually Pastor Jonathan Miller. And uh, we're going to hear him. He has some single pastor problems. If you have joined this church because you think you're going to marry me, this needs to be your last Sunday. We don't do that here. I don't run through the women. We don't do that here. So Admirable. Admirable, Pastor YPJ. There's another fellow that you went to his church and prophesied to him. We know who he is, Jamal down there uh, in, in Georgia. The devil went down to Georgia. Charlie Daniels was not lying. I tell you, I don't know what's going on in Georgia. Everything happening in Georgia. Anyway, let me get back to YPJ. He went to prophesy to Jamal Bryant, and he, he tried to tell Jamal Bryant some truthful things. It was a strange prophecy about dead people praying and all that kind of stuff, dead voices, all right, whatever. But he was trying to tell Jamal, you're going to have to shift your your behavior and change uh, or such and such, and and – Hey, one plus one equal two. If somebody is is grimy, it's gonna come out. You really didn't need the Lord to come all the way down from heaven to tell nobody that. But anyway, YPJ, Pastor YPJ, he said that um, he said in this video that there were women coming to the church thinking that they're going to marry the pastor. Let me tell you something. I admire the fact that you stood up and did better than your buddy Jamal and said, "Listen, if you coming here." to act as if you're going to marry me, talking about you hearing voices tell you you're going to be my spouse. He said, this needs to be your last Sunday at this church. We don't do that here. We don't run through the women in our church. And that is admirable. I appreciate him doing just that uh, because there's a lot of pastors all over America. It ain't just Jamal down there. It's pastors all over America who are flattered by women winking at them in the church and sitting on the front row and, crossing their legs with, with no underwear on. and I mean, you, you'd be surprised what happened in these churches. It, it is crazy uh, when somebody see you, you dress nice, you look nice, you speak nice, you smell nice, you're nice to everybody, nice, nice, nice. And, uh, and we're going to do the etymology of nice one day. Nice actually means stupid. It's a lot of stupid, nice, stupid stuff. But anyway, um, you, you'll be surprised what's happening in these churches. For him to stand up and say, if you think, that you're going to be my wife, <laughs> people laughing at me, <laughs> Prophet is telling you, it, uh, yeah, familiar spirits, uh-huh, amen for him being honest, Tabitha said, right, tell it, Pastor, somebody said amen, but uh, going back to what I was saying, these women coming to these churches and you tell them to get on out of here because they're lusting at you, That that is the right thing to do, we commend you for that. I don't have nothing bad to say about that part. But I hate arrogance. If anybody follows this platform, I'm going I'm to show you something else. If anybody follows this platform, you know my biggest problem is pride. One of the, the seven things God hates is a proud look. I hate the spirit of pride. We got to be honest. If, if the brother would have stopped there, I would have been like, okay, well, he's doing the right thing. But sometimes we toot our own horn. And when you start tooting your own horn and acting like you're doing something great, when really what you're doing is what you ought to do. But when you start tooting your own horn as if you're doing something great, now I got to be honest with everybody and say, all right, let's let's put this thing on right. And we're about to get into some scripture. Now let's 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 see the part that kind of had me like, mm, stop. So let me set order. If you came to this church and you think I'm your husband, unthink it. So let's calm that down. Look at your neighbor and say, calm all that down. Calm all. We don't do that foolishness here. You should be glad you got a pastor with some integrity. We don't do that stuff here. Oh, Lord. 
That the oh lord, that was the part. That was the part, YPJ. That was the part that had me like, oh, okay, all right, let's let's not grandstand. Somebody was out of order. You corrected them, but now you talking about I'm gonna set order, and be, you need to be glad that you got a pastor with integrity. All right, now we got to ask you, why did you allow your ministry to be out of order for so long? And why did you lack integrity that led you to the position you're in now? Because some things that we're calling integrity might be narcissism. Let me say it. Let me say it. Some things that we're calling integrity might be narcissism. And and I'm about to go into a spiel. We we gonna deal with uh generational pastorship. We gonna deal with this worship in the first families. We gonna deal with these PKs and, and we gonna deal with uh being in order and having integrity. Now I gotta give you the video and um we Yep, pride comes before destruction, all the spirit before a fire of a fall. It says Enjoying the Bible study tonight. Be sure to subscribe. All right, now, I'm going to show you this uh, video. I appreciate you. I want to show you this video to let you know, hey, j just calm down for a minute because you're not single because you was just holding on for the Lord. All right, so let, let's go to this video. 2011, I went through a divorce. You all know that. Publicly divorced in this church. When I got divorced, people in the city turned on me that I didn't even know cared. Preachers and ministers and churches that used to invite me to preach still will not invite me to preach. There were words that had gotten out about me that were devastating to my soul. I felt pain in a way I had never felt before. I didn't cheat on my ex. I didn't beat on my ex. We had irreconcilable differences that could not be resolved because the fact of the matter is we were not on the same page. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, now, uh, Pastor YPJ, now I have some problems. Because you just say, oh, you set an order, and thank God you got a pastor who got integrity, but you did not give us any biblical grounds for no divorce. All right? Now, you said that you're a man of integrity, you're a man of order, but the truth of the matter is you're not single because you was waiting on the Lord. You're single because you could not maintain integrity of your marriage and the order of your family. I, and, and some people think I'm hard on marriage. Some people think I'm too soft on marriage. I'm going to give my stance, which might cause some of you to leave. It might cause some of you to come in. But I am going to give my stance on marriage. The book of Matthew chapter 5 and 32 says, But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, which is sexual immorality, cause of her to commit adultery, saving for the cause of fornication, cause of her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry, her that is divorced committeth adultery. I know that ain't popular preaching nowadays. I know that ain't popular preaching. But according to the word of God, grounds for divorce is not, oh, we just wasn't on the same page. We just wasn't eye to eye. You are divorced because of your narcissism. And I'm going to get to the root of why it might be there. I'm going to get to the root of why a lot of preachers deal with narcissism around the country. And I'm going to get to what maybe it ain't all preacher's kids. It ain't all preacher's kids, but I know a lot of preacher's kids who's dealing with the same thing. Because the only thing they've been taught to love and honor is themselves. Their whole life, every, Lord Jesus, don't let me skip ahead. Now, my positional marriage is, if you read the scriptures, the Bible says marriage is for life. The Bible says marriage is honorable in all the bed is under five homemongers and adulterers. God will judge. The Bible says that a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to the wife and the two become one flesh. 
the Bible says you should stay married until death. The scripture says that God hates divorce. He hates divorce. Jesus says, okay, there's one grounds to allow divorce. In the case of porneia, porneia, fornication, which is an umbrella term, which means sexual immorality. And if you did not break up divorce due to sexual immorality, you cause that woman to be living in adultery. All right? That's just the scripture. It ain't right. Now, let, let's talk about rightly divining. Well, we call that this is a betrothed wife. This is an engaged wife. Now, that's what people will say. Now, the same people are tell me not to add to the word of God. The same people are tell me not to lean on my own understanding. But then they say it's about somebody who is engaged, but then turn around and beat down the people that's married with it. And then you say it deals with adultery, but then you say it's engagement because it says the word fornication. So they jump in and out of their own definition of the scripture. But my definition of that scripture is consistent. There is one more reason that I will give for divorce. This is my stance, and I'm going to give a synopsis at the end so that those of you who like me, you, you might not like me after this. Those of you who don't like me, you might like me a little bit more after my explanation. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Listen to it. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God have called us to peace. If you read the rest of that chapter, it says a, a wife is bound to her husband. That's Romans 7. Bound to her husband as long as he lives. But let, let's get that straight too because people use Romans 7 to speak about marriage. But Romans 7 is about law and grace. And it uses the metaphor of marriage. Romans 7 is not a teaching on marriage. Romans 7 is a teaching on law and grace, all right? But we will still go with that. The Bible says a woman is bound to their husband as long as he should live. So that's why Paul uses the words, no longer in bondage in such cases. This is desertion. So sexual immorality or desertion. But look what the scripture says, verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. So other words, if you're the one in the relationship, Pastor YPJ, if you're the one in the, the relationship who's uh, caused the abandonment, the desertion of your marriage, God concludes you as the unbelieving party. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. So, so my thing is, and and I'll and I'll get to some things a little later. Um, but once again, the the study of marriage is a three hour study. There are some things I will have to talk about for three hours for it all to come together. All right, and I'm going to. But now y'all know my overall position. I believe if there's some kind of uh, sexual deviancy or there's any kind of desertion or abandonment that God has not called you to bondage, but to peace in these cases. And that the unbel the party that breaks the marriage is concluded as the unbeliever in the party. I believe that because I have no other recourse in scripture. Every other verse tells you marriage cannot be uh, exited from in any way. And even with the two verses that I gave it to, all of the other teachings of marriage says, stay married, stay married, stay married, stay married, stay married. But even with those two verses where I try to show you some grace somewhere, this is my advice to you. Don't bet your soul on it. In Providence Cornish, when I, when I talk about uh, deviancy, I, I include that in deviancy. If you can abuse someone and want to lay with them, that is that is perversion. I believe that's included in that deviancy. 
and and that's that's what I mean by that. I, I use that as a, a umbrella term. I believe that's also pornea. If you want to abuse someone and then lay with them, that is perverted. Something's wrong with you. All right. So I include that in some people, you know, different things. But but here's what I would say. Even with those two verses that I'm trying to give you to show you some kind of grace. Because here's what these people who just no divorce on any circumstances. Here's what you don't understand. Number one, um, you forget that Jesus is intelligent. We forget that, like, Jesus had a brain. There is no reason. There is no reason to say saving for the cause of sexual immorality. There is no reason. You can just say if if you are married, you cannot put away your wife in the sentence. Apostle Paul had no reason to include verse 15. No reason. But if the unbelieving party departs, let them depart. God has not called you to bondage. Use the same word dealing with a woman that's bound to her husband as long as he should live. He used the same word, bondage, and said that God has called us to peace. There is no reason to use the same verbiage and to, to say God called us to peace and include that verse when there is no reason. There's, so my thing is, let's not put words in God's mouth. Let's not take words out of God's mouth. So I, I wanted to speak on that. That is my stance. But at the end of the day, when it comes to marriage, Pastor Ray Curry ain't betting my soul on it. I'm not betting my soul on on, well, we had disagreement, it was unreconcilable, and this, that. I'm not betting my soul on that. If I were you, I'd just stay holy. If I was you, I'd stay pure. If I was a husband and a wife, I'd work it out. I'd work it out, brother. I'd work it out. Sister, I'd work it out. I wouldn't bet my soul on it. I'm trying to give you two verses to give you some kind of grace, but I am telling you, brothers and sisters, if I were you, it's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep them. And I mean your soul, not your money. I mean your soul, not your money. Y'all better learn what forgiveness is. Y'all would have learned what a reconciling is. Y'all better learn how to be one another's servant and love one another the way that Christ has loved the church. The man need to love the wife as Christ loved the church. The woman need to submit to her husband as unto the Lord. If I were you, I wouldn't play around with my life. I wouldn't play around with my life. And I can go more into the subject of marriage and staying together. God knows I could. Oh, my goodness. We, we got a lot of questions. I'm, I am going to. <laughs> I am going to get into it. Somebody said, what about if a wife performs, uh, refuses to perform her marital duties and continually denies her husband due benevolence? I will tell you something. Y'all y'all better figure it out. Because the Bible, that's, let me tell you something, that would categorize as being uh, sexually deviant and abandonment. And let me tell you something, if I was that woman, I would fix it with Jesus. If you was a man who abusive, talked to her crazy, belittle her, treat her like she your daughter, not your wife, I would fix that with Jesus, man, because that's deviant. And then you want to touch her after you abuse her. And every, no, 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 that is deviant. And I would fix these things. And I would figure out, hey, can we work this out? Because at the bottom line, I wouldn't bet my soul on it. I wouldn't bet my soul on it. Now, if you have gone through these things, if you've gone through divorce, I also disagree with people who act as if it is the unpardonable sin. I, I disagree with that. Jesus said that's only one thing I can't be forgiven for. And then they will come back and argue. They, they, it's an argument back and forth. I'll be here three hours. They'll say, well, how are you going to ask God to forgive you for divorce and then you still live in adultery? And I would say to them, how are you going to ask God to forgive you for murder and the person still dead? You killed them. They're murdered. All right? So this thing can go back and forth. And, and, and it, it'll take three hours for us to undo this, for us to unpack this. And I will do it at another time. But that is my stance. Pastor YPJ did not have a biblical grounds to divorce his wife. And that means that you had no integrity in your marriage. It means that your marriage did not have order. And the Bible says that how can you rule the house of God if you're not able to rule your own house? 
you were disqualified. You were disqualified. You should have sat down. Somebody should have sat you down. You not single because you have integrity in order. You are single because you turned your back on God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Put some fire emojis in the check. The Bible says stay by yourself or be reconciled to your spice. Spice, spouse. The Bible says stay by yourself or be reconciled unto your spouse. Because uh, you, you can separate according to scripture. A separation is not the same as abandonment. If y'all have decided it's just not working out and we need to be two separate places, the Bible says stay by yourself. Stay by yourself. But if that person don't stay by themselves, they've walked out of their marriage. That's abandonment. They, they went and laid with somebody else. And now you're back over in Matthew chapter 5. So uh, we, we got to be very careful. And once again, this is a three-hour discussion, four-hour discussion. And we got to get into Greek and Hebrew. We got to get in tradition. We got to understand uh, Shammai and Hillel. We got to understand what Jesus was referring to because the conversation was dealing with the Pharisees and Sadducees. So Jesus uh, confronted this discussion between the, the followers of Shammai and the followers of Hillel. And if you don't even know that, that means you weren't even serious about studying this stu subject no way. You just want to condemn people to hell. <laughs> you just There are people who just want to condemn you to hell. There's abusive men who want to trap their wives forever. You can't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere because they're abusive. Or you have desperate women who... You got to come back to me. You can't go nowhere because you can't be saved. You can't be saved. You can't go nowhere. And those are desperate women. And sometimes they use this doctrine to trap people in arrangements that don't belong to them because some people can't accept truth and reality. I want to tell you, I thank God for everyone who is a part of this. Um, and once again, I go through a lot. But you all keep this thing afloat. If you'd like to be a blessing to this platform, we're going to get into this. The part two of YPJ. We're going to get in part two. Um, like to be a blessing and help to us to keep us going and keep us fighting. You can support by giving to pa PayPal at RayThePreacher at gmail.com. That is PayPal and Zelle. Also, you can give dollar sign the unction on a Cash App. That will greatly help us because we're fighting many principalities, powers. Uh, people don't preach the truth no more. People do whatever they want to do. And um, when you talk like me, you don't get a lot of support. When you tell people, no, you need to stay with your wives, you need to stay with your husbands and learn to work things out, people, it's, it's too much on Instagram, it's too much on Facebook, say that you can do whatever you want to do, but hell will be your home, and there ain't that many preachers left that will tell you the truth. So when you help support this platform, it is a great blessing because you don't get much support nowhere else. Um, once again, thank you. Uh, PayPal and Zell, rate the preacher at gmail.com. Zell, dollar sign the unction. It's a great help. You you just don't know how lives are being affected. People are calling us all over the world now. Uh, this is not only a national platform, but an international platform. Uh, we're growing daily. It is, it is very different growing a YouTube platform, and you all are making it possible. Uh, it, it's not by happenstance that this platform is growing you all are making it possible um you know tiktok things shoot up you know one viral video youtube is very different and for it to be growing at the rate it is in one year this is a very very well to do platform and you all are making it possible and we're going to talk about this a little later we're going to get back into ypj but i have something called the the unction sponsors area uh and these are people who've been pushing and giving at such a level where it's showing that you're the ones who making this possible. Latanya, McDaniel, uh, Adiana, Prophetess Kanisha, Nita, uh, Michelle Chambliss, uh, Patsy Murray, Yafit Pruitt, my sister Rosina, Owen Terry. Uh, th these, these are the individuals at this point who are pushing at such a rate and, and supporting at such a rate and level that I can't help but keep going. I can't give up because of what you all are doing. There are others who are pushing, and I thank you all, and we're going to acknowledge everyone at the end of this video. I thank you all because you, you're, you're pushing at such a rate that I got to fight. You're pushing at such a rate that I, I, I got to move on. And um, 
you make it possible, and I really appreciate you. The that's our our new level of the unction sponsors area. That's the make it in the USA. Come on to the USA, praise God. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about the other part of YPJ. Um, let, let's look at this again because I, I thought this was very. I want to talk about this narcissism that exists. Let's let's look at this. So let me set order. If you came to this church and you think I'm your husband, unthink it. So let's calm that down. Look at your neighbor and say, calm all that down. Calm all. We don't do that foolishness here. You should be glad you got a pastor with some integrity. We don't do that stuff here. Now, now, see, when someone abandons their marriage and keep right on preaching, when someone decides that I am so great that I, I just, I got to move on and, you know, I don't have enough space for you in my life right now. We're just not on the same page. There are roots to that. And so I, I um, went and did a little bit of research and found out that YPJ, Pastor YPJ, his name is Jonathan Miller. He was the youth pastor under his parents. Okay. Okay, man. Let I... Let's let's stop. Stop it. Stop it, preachers all over America. Stop it. You know if your son or your daughter is not ready for this or that in ministry. Let them use their little gifts. Let them use their little talents. Let them use whatever abilities God gave them. But don't make them know you, pastor. Don't make them know you, pastor. You know that boy like tail. You know that girl like when men wink at her. Don't be putting these people up here, calling them a youth pastor. What youth have you raised? Not saying that you you can you can't do it if you don't have no kids. If you just have a love for children and God is giving you a great perspective of ministry for them, it can happen. But sometimes we do it because you look cool and you are a kid. And I would like to tell we. I love the PKs. My children are now PKs. But I'm going to tell you as what I call a SK. I'm a SK. Now, y'all was the preacher's kids, but I was a servant's kid. See, there's a difference. Y'all was the preacher's kid, but I am a servant's kid. See, what the preacher's kids don't know is that Y'all have shared y'all mommy and daddy with the world. Y'all have shared y'all parents with the church, and it has cost you family trips. It has cost you family time. It has cost you different issues in your life. Absolutely. But what I found out as an SK, as a servant's kid, is when the preacher's kids get lonely, the servants of the church run in to go cater to the PK. And the SK don't have nobody. I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. It, it ain't a war. It ain't a war to see which kids in the church have the most trauma. But I am speaking from my experience as a servant's kid. When your parents go out to be angels and fly all over the world and do whatever they want to do, they are in the era because their first ministry is their home. All right. But then all of the servants of the church, they're serving more. They're giving more. They're doing what they can. The pastor call and say, check on my son. Check on my daughter. Make sure my kids are all right. I want you to talk to my kids. I want you to take my kid out, whatever the case may be. And then while the servants of the church are going forth to do everything they can to make sure the church is happy and the pastors is happy and the first family is happy, their kids sitting around like, man, it would have been real nice if that money went to my college fund. It would have been real nice if that money went towards our family vacation. It would have been real nice if that money went to I, I got two pair of shoes and the pastor's child got 30 pair of shoes. Everybody in the church, you doing okay? You doing all right? Oh, we love you. Oh, we just love you. You so handsome. You so dizzy. You so that. And to the to the preacher's child and the servant's child is like, man, my, and, and thank God I have parents who love me. But sometimes it's like, man, give me a hug. Give me a hug. <laughs> and, and, and I don't have no problem with preacher's kids. 
But sometimes we don't know that we're developing in that child a sense of narcissism. They learn from an early age, it's about me. It's about me. I have a gift to talk. I have a gift to sing. I have a gift to reach people. I look nice. I'm popular. I dress better than everybody else. So it's about me, me, me. And then when you invite somebody on, it was narcissism. When you get a wife, it's out of narcissism. I pulled the baddest one in there. I got the baddest one in there. Oh, I could have picked any of them girls. I could have picked all of them. But nah, I wanted that one. I picked this one. It's about you picked. Like you were so special. Oh, Virginia in the house. Virginia in the house. Somebody said, for real. Somebody, my dear sister Donna said, I've seen it too many times. All right now, Virginia. People know what I'm saying is the truth. And now you're a narcissist. And you got a wife, not because you love her, because she looked apart. But y'all couldn't get on the same page because the only page is serve me. My parents served me. The people in the church served me. The youth department encouraged me. Everybody catered to me. Me, me, me. So when I marry you, your assignment is to love me. I don't need to love you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I don't need to love you. I don't need to take care of you. I don't need to serve you. I don't need to lift you. Me, me, me. And we create these monsters and allow them to go on because they're gifted and they can talk nice and they look nice. And then you get up in front of your church talking about, oh, if you join this church because you think you're going to be my spouse, you can get out of here. Brother, you created the problem. <laughs> Sometimes we create these problems and we don't know how to fix them. And the truth is, we, we, it's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. There, there are women everywhere who are hurting and, and want companionship. And there are some sisters who would be obedient. But we know, we know good and well, we don't want no wife right now because we're still doing us. It's about us. It, it's about us. And it may come a time where you switch over, but the truth is, you've gone your whole life. It's about you. And there's a lot of women who think they're ready to worship a man. Let me say it. There's a lot of women who think, well, if I had a husband like that, he wouldn't have to worry about me, honey. Marry him. Marry him. There's a lot of women who think they're ready to live for and worship a man. And the truth is, you can't even worship a God who is perfect. And you're going to do everything a man needs you to do, who's going to talk to you crazy time to time, who's going to treat you a little different from time to time. I just got to be honest. These pastors are narcissists. A lot of pastors out here are narcissists, and they need to go somewhere and get delivered. They need to get delivered. I, uh, Paul said, you think that I commend you? He said, I commend you not. I tried to give the brother some credit because he had enough sense to tell people, listen, if you come into this church and you go marry me, you, this need to be your last Sunday. I try to give you some credit, but then when you start tooting your own horn like you're doing something special, when you, ought to, when you ought to be broken before the Lord, Lord, I've created so many issues. I've created so many problems. Lord, I've done wrong. There was a good woman it, it could have worked out for and because I was so wrapped up in myself, we couldn't come on the same page. And Lord, I might have put her soul in danger. Because you said, if anyone marries the one who was in adultery, you caused her to commit adultery. Now you got two souls in trouble. Your heart ought to be broken before the Lord. Now what I would say is, I believe that the only sin that cannot be forgiven is the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit which I believe there are some very specific circumstances that facilitate that. But when you're a cult leader, you try to make everything equal to blaspheming the Holy Ghost because it shuts people up. You don't have to argue no more. When you say, oh, that's blaspheming the Holy Ghost, that's blaspheming the Holy Ghost, that's blaspheming the Holy Ghost. When you, when you do that, it shuts everybody up. And Jesus said, that's the only thing that cannot be forgiven. So I believe, yes, there's even forgiveness for those who are married and divorced. But here's what I would say at the end of that. You better know you know. I had a blood brother. Let me show you something. I'm talking to my own family. 
I had a blood brother. The enemy was attacking him. And, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? And I spoke to my own blood brother. And I told him, brother, I wouldn't bet my soul on it. I wouldn't, ble- I wouldn't bet my soul on it. I want to tell every man, every woman, <laughs> you better know you know. You want to play around with marriage and divorce? You better know you know. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and give you permission to go out and do whatever. I am telling you, you better know you know. Married to a pastor 15 years in the Church of God in Christ. Asked for help and counseling while he cheated the entire marriage. I was told to stay in it by leadership so the church would stay together. Wickedness. Wickedness. The Bible says God has called you to peace. God has called you to peace. You do not have to stay in relationships where people bring you diseases back and Putting your life in danger, putting your soul in danger and all this kind of stuff. God has called us to peace and that is my belief. But at the end of, that's that's my belief. But at the end of the day, I will say to anyone, you better know you know. You better know you know. And once you get that clearance, you got that clearance. God has power to forgive his people. God has power to forgive his people. So I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening to my rant on that because Some things that we're lifting up as virtue might be closeted narcissism. And I'm going to go into some lighter things, but it's just the state of the church. And we've talked 41 minutes on this, but it's the state of the church that is grieving me. And I want you to see a circus clown on display. I will believe what the word has said and what he said over my life. And some of y'all are scared because you've never jumped that high before. You would rather me get on the word of God and sit on it. But if you give me this trampoline, 10 feet, 12 feet, you could take that mug up to 14. I'm for you to stand on the word of God. And this is the thing. It takes action from me. I'm for you. You know, when you don't have really any depth of word, you have to resort to constant theatrics. Um, In the Old Testament, there was a prophetic drama. There was a a prophetic enactment. The Lord would tell people to lay on their side a certain amount of days or strip themselves and walk through the streets as a slave naked. Uh, There was a prophet Ezekiel. God told him to eat dung. Uh, I, I mean, there, there, there was this uh, prophetic dramatization. I believe it was Jeremiah told to shave a third of his beard, burn a third of his beard, and, and scatter a third of his beard into the wind, or, or whatever the case may be. And there's these uh, prophetic enactments, this prophetic dramatization that happened when God would give a specific word. But when you don't really have a word from the Lord, when God ain't really leading you like that, You'll keep reaching over in the drama somewhere, setting up stages and doing the theatrics because you refuse to study. So now you're just getting up and making up stuff. And, and people just accept every, anything. And he bouncing on a trampoline. And I'm like, that's not even a good analogy. The, ho- the Holy Ghost will have you bouncing up and down. The Word of God don't have you up and down and up and down. The Holy Spirit, he's able to bear you up. <laughs> now, now to him who's able to keep your feet from falling. You ain't falling and rising and falling on the word. You might go through storm. You might go through season. You might go through tests. You might fall on your own, but the word ain't going to see you falling. The word will hold you up. And, and that's the problem. That's the problem. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, teachings. Teach the word. Doctrine is good 
teaching, sound teaching. And what's happening is pastors don't have no word, so they are resorting to nonsense. They're resorting to theatrics. Do you understand what's happening to the church? The church is being raided by witches. Good God in heaven. The ch- I feel unction here. The church is being raided by witches. The church is being raided by warlocks. The church is being raided by false doctrine. The church is being attacked from without with the Hebrew Israelites, the, the first churches. The church is being attacked on all sides. And we got people playing on a trampoline, sons and daughters being brought into error. They're looking at crystals and they're handling sage and they're going into spiritism and they're doing all types of astral projection and all types of spiritual exercises and practices that are extra biblical and you got somebody bouncing on a trampoline because they have not gotten in their word the only thing they've learned to do is be trendy and market the 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 world is at war with the truth and we're bouncing on a trampoline when there's 66 good books We can go in and dig in and extrapolate the truth. And here we are playing like a circus clown. People being attacked because of the truth. The truth is being talked about and talked against daily. And we're playing in the middle of church. Can we wake up, saints? Can we wake up? Can we stop supporting foolishness? But Mike Todd has learned the cadence of Gen Z and Gen Alpha. And those of us who are still talking about millennials don't even know that we've lost two more generations. This man is speaking in the cadence of Gen Z and Gen Alpha, and they think they're being taught because their their attention spans only last as long as a YouTube And the YouTube can't be 47 minutes like this one. Their brains can't last. The only time they can pay attention a long time, if it's something like Switch and and they're playing a a video game and they can pay attention. But these young people ain't even learning in school, let alone the word of God. So he has learned the cadence of Gen Z and Gen Alpha. And guess what? It is a cadence that don't attend to sound wisdom. And you would think, well, y'all need to learn the cadence. No, we need to preach the truth. And whom the Lord so called will come out. But I'm not going to play a game with any generation, mine or the young ones. Yes, we must do things to appeal to them so that they can learn. We can explain things to them. But we can't play with their lives, man. We can't play with our souls because they're going to go to school and that those little boys in the Hebrew Israelite camps, they are learning to tear your church apart. Them little kids in the, the Muslim camps, they are learning to tear your church. Those mosques, they are learning to tear your church apart. Those children in the comedic sciences and practices, the, the, the new age Kids, they are learning to tear your church apart. And what are our kids learning? The Holy Ghost, the the word is like a trampoline. That's what's happening at church. It's like a trampoline. Foolishness, buffoonery. So don't tell me children can't learn. It's the fact that you won't teach them nothing. If you actually teach the children something, they'll learn. Just this past Sunday, our youth pastor spoke about how we are saved by grace through faith. And, and he explained to those children how it is grace that brings us to the cross, that allows us to obey unto salvation, that allows us to believe and be baptized. Amen. And then, then he began to, uh, we, we got into Proverbs chapter 7, and we talked about Proverbs chapter 7 in such a way, it's better than any Tyler Perry movie you can see. When a a young man got with a strange woman pretending to be a church girl who had a husband who was out of town, and a boy got killed. It was better than any Tyler Perry movie you could ever hear. We broke that thing down Sunday. Why? Because there's a way to reach our young people, but we can't reach them with foolishness. Good God in heaven. 
And then you got this this po boy right here. Let, let's <laughs> listen to this. They received their sight and followed him. Now, all the way back to the beginning of the passage, you see this little chapter heading right here? That is not originally in the Bible. Okay, This is the part that is the word of God that was translated from the original language. This is something somebody put in a study Bible to tell you this is a new section. And the I Bible have a is question. A, it says, two blind men receive sight. And here's my question. If this happened, why are they still called that? Now I'm going to get on Stephen Furtick. Now I'm going to get on Stephen Furtick. Because I, I talked about the single pastor, YPJ. Then I'm talking, I talked about the simple pastors, uh, Mike Todd jumping on trampolines, acting crazy. That's simple. Now I want to talk about a struggling pastor. Now you know I got a, a little angle with this. If I'm calling Stephen Furtick struggling, he's Stephen Furtick, man. And he is worldwide. Why are you calling him struggling? I'm going to tell you why I call him struggling. Because... As Mike Todd has figured out the cadence of Gen Z in Gen Alpha, Stephen Furtick only has the cadence of Gen X and the Millennials. Stephen Furtick is still preaching to Gen X and the Millennials because that's his audience. That's who he talked to. That's his bread and butter. And, and the Millennials are old enough. That's us. We're raising kids. We, we, we're raising kids, and we got the money right now. We're the ones getting the money right now. And that's the cadence that he's speaking to, and the man is struggling. What are you talking about, Stephen? Why are you preaching the headings? The man made he – oh, my gosh. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See, sometimes we're trying too hard. And that's what people accuse me of. People accuse me. Ray will take people in the scriptures. I'm trying too hard. I will take people to the word of God, and I'm trying too hard. This man is literally preaching a heading. And he ain't struggling. Brother, get a word. Get a word, Stephen Furtick. I'm going to show you. He said, if Jesus healed them, why are they called two blind men? Now, I'm going a, I'm to a put up a picture. This man, you talking about somebody blind. You talking about somebody blind. Stephen Furtick got to be blind. He got to be blind. Because I'm going to show you what's literally in the man face. At verse 30, look at the three words circled in red. I circled them in red. He got the blue circle and the yellow circle, but I circled three words in red. Two blind men. They're called two blind men because verse 30 called them two blind men because they were two blind Blind men. Steven, you're struggling, brother. You're struggling. You're struggling hard, man. We need to get back in the word. You don't want to teach these people no real word. You know that there's a lot of mess out there in your congregation. You know there's a lot of rainbow flags out there in your congregation. You know there's a lot of divorce and, and, and marrying and giving in marriage. You know that there's a lot of promiscuity in your fornication, in your kind of fornication, in your congregation, <laughs> fornication too. You know good and well there's a lot of new age in your congregation. There's a lot of high-mindedness in your congregation, and you won't get to the truth of the knit and grit of the word of God. You'll preach foolishness before you preach them people the truth. You will preach foolishness before you give them people the truth. You rather tell them, yeah, let's look at this heading in between some chapters. Why they call you that? And, and you try to go up, yeah, they call you by what you used to be, but you need to call them by what God made them. And then he said later on, they're not too blind, man. They're too bold, man. 
man, hey, Stephen, whatever, man. We we need to get in the word of God. We need to get in the word of God. We need to get in the truth. And when we don't get in the truth, we create monsters on stage. We create people who have no standard. Uh, and the people are going to do what the pastors do. That's why I, I really don't like what Mike Todd is doing. Because at what point do these people got to grow up? At what point do we grow up? And that's a problem with my generation and younger. We don't know when adolescence is over. And now we think, oh, man, Mike Todd had fun every week. He plays on a trampoline. He pour, He had a food fight with a room. He was pouring syrup and, and whipped cream on a Bible. And he, and he spit in his hand. And, and, and Mike Todd was playing in some water. And it, he gets up there and plays. He's fostering a spirit of adolescence throughout the whole world, a spirit of adolescence. We never grow up. We never grow up. We, we hit we hit a ceiling. We never grow up. At what point do a man have to go ahead and be a man? At what point do a man have to go ahead and mature? It says they were blind at the time. After interaction with our Savior, they were no longer blind. Examples of God, love, hit and healing power, plain and simple. That was Stephen Furtick, referring to Stephen Furtick. But at, at what point do we grow up? And then Stephen Furtick, bless his heart, he's speaking to the millennials and the Gen X's, and he up on stage preaching about headings in between chapters because he, he all ran out of word. Because now, now we're running into problems. Now we're getting older, brother. The, the millennials finding out that that I can't get into Mike Todd. A lot of us know, man, I, I I just can't get into him. A lot of us already understand that. Because now we ain't playing on no trampoline. What 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 it is is we tied up the trampoline. Mike. <laughs> Those of us who getting older, we know that we're tired of the trampoline. I don't want up and down. I don't want rising and falling. We tired of a trampoline life. We want stability in God. And Stephen Furtick, he's getting to a point now where it's like, okay, my audience is getting older, and I got to figure out what to talk about because they live in a real life. And now he preaching in between the pages because he don't know what to say now next but the truth. He don't know what to say next but the truth. Stephen Furtick, let me tell you what to preach Next Sunday, the truth. Preach the truth next Sunday. Help them people that you talking to. We're getting older now. Now we're looking at our Gen Z and Gen Alpha kids, and they crazy. They crazy. And we don't know what to do with that. But we, but what you need to tell them, Stephen Furtick, is the reason why your kid's crazy, because they're looking at you. You going to church and praising God and then going home and doing something else. You don't have no standard. You don't, <laughs> excuse me, you don't know how to keep your families together. You don't know how to keep your churches together. You don't know how to have good work ethic. You need to tell the millennials the truth. Tell Gen X the truth. You want to know what to preach on next week? You don't have to preach on no headings. I don't want you to preach on the preface. After, in a little while, you're going to be preaching the title page. You're going to be preaching the preference. You're going to be preaching the index. You're going to be preaching the references. This is number 365. And you know, if you take a three and turn it sideways, it almost looks like a little boat with two compartments. You're going to be preaching crazy stuff in a minute. So just preach the truth, Stephen. Just preach the truth. Oh, my goodness. Uh, tonight, I, I thank God for everyone. <laughs> who's a part of this work uh if you would like to support once again it is rate the preacher at gmail.com for paypal and zale it is dollar sign the unction for cash app um if you all don't support us we don't have a lot of people patting us on our back telling us oh man keep on preaching the truth you, you're doing a good job if anything i have people attacking my my platforms people are uh, attacking the 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 truth and you become a pariah because you, you're willing to stand on what the Bible says. Somebody said the reason why he won't preach the truth is because he doesn't know the truth. I agree. And uh, I, I just want to thank those who hung and thirst for righteousness.
Once again, Prophetess Quenisha, thank you. Sharice Hennant, Karen Keys, Kawana uh, Madrik, Michael Brown, Kathy Boyd, Carrie Seeley, Carton Mendez, Rosina, save our family's organization. We, we appreciate you and your organization. Uh, John Tay Cooper, thank you, man. Uh, Tarnisha McLaughlin, that's my sister. Michelle Lawrence, Trisha, Sheila May, uh, Cheryl Ruiz, Latanya McDaniel, Nicole Morales, Adiana, um, Taryn, Owen Terry, Janet Hansberg. I tried to see your whole name. I hope I got that right. Uh, Nicole Floyd, Michelle Cherblis. Thank you. Uh, Patsy Mori, my dear sister Nita, Valerie Gamble Hunt, Yay Fat Pruitt, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Shelton, Louise Cruz. I want to thank you all for supporting this platform. And once again, we have a new uh, area that's called the Unction Sponsors area. Uh, Latanya McDaniel, uh, Adiana, Quenisha, Nita, uh, Michelle Chambliss, Patsy Murray, Yafat Pruitt, my dear sister Rosina, brother Owen Terry. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for your love and your support. Uh, these more of you will be on this list. I'm going to make sure our records are checked. More of you are going to be on this list. Uh, just be faithful and, and uh, keep on pushing the platform. And I, I just thank God for each and every one of you. But these are the ones who I can say are making this possible. These are the ones who are making this possible. And I want to thank you for that. Um, somebody said... Uh, <laughs> oh boy Furtick is in all of Jake's you know something bad there uh, get back to the word stop preaching these gimmicks absolutely somebody said that uh, what's the name um, God bless you man I appreciate you um some things are coming. Some things are coming, and uh, we, we're going to get more into that. Those of you who are in that, that level of, of uh, support, we're going we gonna to connect. There's some things coming. And I, I mean, in this new month, we're about to go into overdrive. So God bless you. Um, somebody said that Mike Todd <laughs> is a Peter Pan preacher. He don't want to grow up. That's my analogy. I keep saying that. Like Peter Pan. Don't want to grow up. And uh, that's where we are today. I want to say to everyone who has supported this platform, thank you. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for uh, pushing and encouraging us when nobody else will. If, if you understand, um, I, I would like to say this too, very quickly about these names. Very quickly about these names. These are people... I don't have to explain ministry to. These are people I don't have to explain ministry to. Everything in the world requires support. You, you have to undergird it. And these are people who understand, listen, I believe in this ministry. I know that people need to hear the truth. People's souls are at stake. And preachers are out here lying, either saying you can do whatever you want to do or either saying, we're the only way to heaven, and if you don't think of it like this, can't nobody be saved except through us. And we need people to come to Jesus. They need Jesus. They need the word and the Holy Spirit because God has given the church an unction, which is the teaching ministry of the Holy Ghost. And these people understand that, and I appreciate them because ministry must be supported. It From the book of Acts, then people got full of the Holy Ghost and gave. From the book of Acts, then people got full of the Holy Ghost and gave because they understood ministry requires that the church be a, a kingdom together. And I, I appreciate that because if you look anywhere in the world, lies are supported. Lies are funded. That's why a lot of ministries are 501c3s. 
it, that's a whole nother subject. It don't, let me tell you something. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people get 501c3s because they, they want, you know, grants and this, and they have no idea that when it comes to ministry, it limits your speech. The government can come in at any time and say, you preach this, and this is now a political issue, and I'm revoking your status, and you're going to have to pay back everything going back up to that sermon. And you're going to have to give all of that back to the government that you got from contributors, any donation. Or anything. They can do it because the 501 uh, Section C3, that in that particular section, that IRS section, it limits your speech. So when, when you have a ministry, uh, that's why a lot of churches who know they're going to lie to people, go ahead and get it. They know they're here to be a, a, a tool of Satan. They know they are. So they go ahead and get a 501c3 because they're here to lie to you. And the lies are funded. All right? And that, once again, there's some people who didn't know that. They, they didn't know. They were told in order to have a church, you got to have a 501c3 because you're nonprofit. And, and they don't know they do not need a 501c3 to have a church. A church is automatically considered not for profit. You don't need a 501c3. Now, our church and our ministry do not have a 501c3 because I'm going to say whatever I want to say for the Lord. I'm going to do whatever I got to do for the Lord. Now, I have another apparatus because I am a businessman too. See, I, I'm, I am not just a Christian that don't know nothing. I'm also a businessman. My degree is in business. Uh, my degree is in business, business fundamentals. I got my real estate license in 2013. Um, so I understand business. So I have an apparatus. I have a company on the side that has a 501c3, all right, because there are things I, I need to do in the community to help people out or this, that, and the other. But when it comes to over here, you can't touch nothing that's going on over here because this is all Jesus stuff. You're not going to control what I got to say. You're not going to control what I got to do. All this over here is Jesus stuff, and that don't have nothing to do with you. Now, if you want to get mad about that, you can get mad about that, but go on with yours. And I don't care nothing about that. This Jesus stuff over here, it got to stay free in God. This Jesus stuff got to operate in the, in the confines of the Lord. So the Lord, the Lord teaches us wisdom and prudence. So um, I, I thank God for everyone who is a part of this platform, everyone who has given, everyone who is pushing, uh, everyone who is encouraged, encouraging. I, I like when people can hear me. Uh, Chelsea Haley, uh, Hale or Haley said, amen. I got a, a that's right too. Praise the Lord. I, I love when people can hear what you're saying. Um, I appreciate this too. Pastor Ray, I am from the baby boomer generation. Keep up the good work. I'm encouraged that there is a remnant who still believe in proclaiming the word of God with clarity and integrity. Be blessed. I appreciate that so much. I appreciate that so much. And um, tonight, we thankful for everyone who has tuned in. Once again, this is the unction where we give the word of God and depend on the spirit of God to edify the people of God. And that's what we're going to continue to do. We're going to continue to edify. We're going to continue to lift, live, lift, and to build. God bless you. And thank God for Prophetess Quinesha. She is still pushing, still pushing. And uh, this is good ground. Uh, the unction, raythepreacher at gmail.com for Zelle and for Cash App. I, I'm, for Cash App, it is dollar sign the unction. For Zelle and PayPal, it is raythepreacher at gmail.com. Thank you for being a part of this movement. This movement. I will be in uh, Richmond, Virginia, um, this Friday and Saturday. I'll be in Richmond, Virginia, Virginia giving the word. I just uh, came back from Alabama, uh, supporting a young lady who, who got her white coat ceremony in pursuit of a doctorate in veterinary medicine. Um, we just came back from Georgia. We're going back to Georgia in May. I'm going to be in Washington, Georgia. Um, We'll be ministering down there. So the, the ministry is going forth. We're doing some great things. God bless you. Shalom. See you all next Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. 
God bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful night.